the Platinum Diversity Study was um, designed to study the outcomes in women and minorities relative to white men over a one-year period after uh, receiving a drug-loading stent, the Promos Premier stent. Um, we found that um, the composite endpoint of death myocardial infarction and target vessel revascularization was comparable between the three groups. It occurred at a rate of 7.6% in white men, 8.6% uh, 8 in women, and 9.6% in uh, minorities. Uh, when adjusted for imbalances in baseline characteristics, there was no difference between that primary composite endpoint. But there were some interesting other findings on the secondary endpoints. We did find that the likelihood of um, either dying or having a composite of death and MI was higher in minorities, even after adjustment for those imbalances in baseline characteristics. And in women, the likelihood of either having death or myocardial infarction was also statistically significantly higher versus white men. So that really begs the question as to what explains these differences and, and really warrants further investigation. And uh, you, you do have some hypotheses as to what is going on. If you could talk about those, please. Yeah. I mean, these are really complex uh, issues. Um, one's health and outcome is dictated by so many factors. There are biological factors. Obviously, there could be differences in adherence to platelets, uh, to uh, antiplatelet medications. Now, we did study compliance in this uh, study, and we found that there was a statistically significant higher rate of st maintaining dual antiplatelet therapy in white men, although the numbers were very, very similar. There's only a, a couple of percentage points difference between the two, uh, between the three groups, although it was statistically significant. So compliance is an important issue. I think some of the socioeconomic factors are very important. And uh, we're going to be studying these further because we did collect baseline data on uh, uh, social uh, factors such as um, living situation, income, uh, uh, education, um, things like uh, exercise habits and, um, and uh, language concordance and language fluency. So I think as we study some of these non-clinical factors, I have a feeling that some of these will also track to the uh, differences in outcome as well. And what would you say, though, uh, until you get data and information along those lines, what is the uh, immediate message that you think can be drawn from these findings? Yeah, I think that number one, the most important finding here is that we don't collect enough data on women and minorities in clinical trials in general. Um, for example, minorities often constitute less than 5 to 10 percent of clinical trial participants in interventional cardiology. That's lesson number one. I think we as uh, all stakeholders involved in research and, and, and evidence-based medicine need to try to ensure that there's better representation in clinical trials. Number one. Number two, our study suggests that these differences do exist, and even when we try to adjust for the differences that we saw at baseline, there seems to be a potential incremental risk. I think we need to just stick to the standard guidelines in terms of managing these patients uh, aggressively with standard care, things like dual antiplatelet therapy, lipid lowering, attention to hypertension, and other risk factors. And I think there, this study shows that there's potential opportunity that's not yet met uh, within the minority and women population.